the mountain. I'm excited. Hey, I um. I'm just so thankful for what God, how great God is, and how amazing He is, and I'm thankful for you, Amen. Um, it amazes me that how much that we are. Uh, we, we, we see what God is doing in mighty ways through people's lives and people's hearts. And I told you last week, I wish I could share testimonies, and that would be great. But um, you can see it in the way people have changed and who they are. And, and I know it's, it's been difficult to be out here. It's been really difficult to be out here. And, um, but I thank you for coming, and I thank you for being here. And I'm excited about our dinner tonight. And uh, we got some new stuff coming up in January that I'm super excited about. God has uh, been praying to God, and God showed us a way that we're going to go over the next couple of years, and I'm super excited about that. Uh, but I know God has a word for us today, and I know He is the God of the mountain, just like He's the God of the valley. And I know a lot of times in this in this time between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's usually the most depressed time that we ever had. It's mostly the time that people get upset because they lost somebody or they can't have anything. I think Brother James told me one time, funerals skyrocket during this time where people have passed away. And it's hard, but I have a hope because God is still God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, you're going to get excited with me or you're not. That's okay. I might get a little bit louder today, but... I want to invite you to the table this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke 14. That's where we're going to be at this morning. Luke 14, the same place we've been the last two weeks. Verses 15 through 23. And it says this. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet, invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to those to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five milk of oxen. I'm on the way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house began angry and, and ordered his servant go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Over the last couple of weeks, I've heard some people tell me how great um, if I melt up here, it's okay. I'm super hot right now, but it's not. Um, if, 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 I, if I start sweating, I'll be all right. Um, but I, I heard it could be a couple of people talk about how, uh, how this has been a great series that has touched their heart and really seen where God's talking about the table. And, and, and I, I, I begin to think about this whole table thing and how great it is, how we need to invite more people to our table, to our church, to the kingdom of God. Not just our church, but to the kingdom. Oh, God, let them know who Jesus is and how great he is. And this, as we begin going through this series, we begin to look at things. Like uh, uh, the first week, we talked about how this we invite because it's been prepared. And, and we look at the souls of the situation, and there's still room at the table. Then last week, we talked about what the invitation looks like and how it's for everybody. And it's a bring anything invitation. And it's everything we need invitation. Which leads us to this week. You see, once you get this invitation, you have a choice to make. Amen? You realize that everything you do, you have a choice. Right? You have a choice to get up in the morning time. Amen. Right? Some of us don't want to get up in the morning. Some of you are regretting it right now that you got up this morning. You just wanted to sleep in this morning. You have a choice on what you're going to eat. Right? I always hate that time of year because it's almost January 1st. And you know what all we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about how we're going to lose weight, right? And so we try to make choices, right choices, right? And so for January 1st, you eat all healthy. On January 2nd, you go back to cake, right? <laughs> January 3rd, you stack the little Debbie cakes back in your house, amen? January 4th, you had Pepsi. January 5th, you forgot what you made your uh, New Year's resolution all about, amen? We, get it, we have to make a choice. You see, this invitation has been given. And I want to let you know this morning, when you give the invitation, if somebody denies it, they're not denying you. Don't get frustrated when somebody denies the invitation to 
come to the kingdom of God. But you know what? God is giving you the opportunity not to stop, but to keep going and keep moving. Because listen, they're not denying you. They're denying the change inside of them. Maybe they're not ready yet. Maybe it's not their time. But you know what, church? That doesn't mean we stop doing it. Amen. We got to keep this going. We got to keep moving. We got to keep inviting. Think about this week. Uh, I, I, I invited somebody twice this week, and they kept denying me. And, and you know what? I, I'm going to invite them again, and I'll invite them again, and I'll invite them again. And you might say, well, Bobby, aren't you just pestering them? And I said, no, because I want them to know about Jesus Christ. Amen. I want them to know about it. Just like when you, I, I know some of you got plans for Thanksgiving where your family comes over. Um, last night we sat down, was the last night or two nights ago, we sat down and we planned our Thanksgiving dinner. We were excited about the ones that we invited. And you know what? We want them to know and we'll tell them again very quickly what you got to bring. Amen. <laughs> we don't want the turkey missing or the ham missing or, or the shrimp, as my son says, missing for Thanksgiving dinner. Amen. We got to have those invitations, but they're not denying you. you everyone has to make that choice. You have to make the choice to come in to dine or, or to refuse it. Not to allow anything to cause you to refuse or put off accepting God's offer of salvation is a foolish decision. But guess what? It happens all the time. You see God offering his son as a sacrifice for sinners, but to be reconciled to him. But many times we refuse what he's offering. But this morning I want to give you three reasons why we should accept it. The first reason why I ask you not to refuse is because at the table, you find relationship. At the table, you'll find a relationship. A have you ever ate alone? <laughs> Amen. Isn't that kind of sad? I, sometimes I go to the restaurant and I eat alone. I think people feel sorry for me because sometimes they just stop at my table and sit down. Amen. <laughs> I know all the waiter, waiters and waitresses because they come and sit at my table sometimes and talk to me. I guess they feel like I ain't got no friends, amen. I just sit by my, you know, I, I, go, I go out to eat a lot. We, we don't like to cook at our house, amen. Uh, so, so we like to go out to eat. And so we go out and eat and I sit at the table and there's nobody there. But do you realize when you go to a table, there's usually more than one chair? You ever notice that? Yeah, it's usually more. There's at least one other chair. You know what's amazing about this invitation? The master and the servant is already there. He's just waiting for you to be there. The Bible says that the master prepared, got it ready. He got the servant there. So you know the servant's going to be there. So if God's there and God's children's there, then that's a place of relationship for those that don't know him. Church, we need to start having a relationship with people that come to our table. You're, people feel lonely nowadays. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have felt lonely. You felt like nobody's going through what you're going through anymore, amen? You felt like everybody everybody don't, don't know what you're feeling. What you're, you know what, church? It's time that we start loving on people, amen? Because God wants a relationship with you. You see, when you come to the table of the kingdom of God, it is a place of relationship. Because now you have a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You have a relationship inside of you like you never had before. And those times that you feel lonely, you realize you're not alone anymore. Because my God is with you. My God is there to comfort you. My God is there to be with you. And church, if you would just come to the table, you'll find a relationship like you've never had before. God loves you. And he wants a personal relationship with you. You know how I know that 1 John 4 and 10 says this. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Not because you love God, but God loves you. Do you realize that? Even when you don't love God, God still loves you. Amen. Hey, hey, Isn't that exciting? Even, even when you don't love him, he loves you. And even when you have issues, when you have problems, when you're running away, God still loves you. Isn't that something to get excited about? Yeah. That they love you no matter. It's an unconditional love. You had to do nothing to get the love of Jesus Christ. Because he already loves you. 
But I love it. He don't only love you. Look what Acts 17 and 27 says. It says, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. He loves you so much that he wants you to seek after him. But guess what? He's right there beside you. Isn't that amazing? It is a place of relationship. It is a place where you come to the table and you dine with the king, with the father, with the one that prepared the best for you. Amen. It is a place where you get to know who he is and how great he was. <coughs> you see, I love it. Because God loves you so much that even though you were in sin, he sent somebody to save you. You see, when we're born, we're born into sin. Because Adam and Eve ate part, of, ate part of the fruit, and because of that, we have sin inside of us when we're born. And listen, church, you can never be born and just say, hey, I'm going to heaven. You actually have to find him and get a relationship with him. But if you accept the invitation to eat at the table, I love what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But I love the next verse. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. That's the best invitation you could ever have. You come through him and you can be saved. Amen. Tonight we've invited you back here for food, right? It's going to be good food. I know it is. I know some of y'all can cook. Amen. I ain't cooking, I ain't bringing hot pockets, so you all right, amen. <laughs> I know there's no, you know what I'm bringing? I'm bringing plates, amen. I can't mess that up, amen. I don't think so. I might can, but I can't mess that up. But I know some of you are going to pick your favorite and you're going to cook it. Because I know you're going to cook it right, too. You're not just going to throw it together. Because you don't want other people talking about your food. <laughs> amen. So you're going to try to prepare the best for them. And we've invited you to come and eat part of the best food that you'll ever eat. We want you to come and eat it. And you know what's so amazing about it? God wants you to come to the table and dine on him the best that he can ever give. So you can have a relationship with him. Not just a relationship where you say, I know God. But a personal relationship that says, he is my friend. He is my savior. He is my comforter. He is my healer. He is my joy. He is my peace. He is my long suffering. He is the one that helps me get through this world. He is the one that makes sure that when I am down, he is there to help lift me back up. That's the kind of relationship. If you just come to the table. Come to the table. That's not all he does. You see, because it's not only just about a relationship. If we accept this invitation, then the food will change our life forever. Have you ever ate something that just changed your life? Amen. One time we were, I don't know, little Debbie made these little cakes, amen. And, and, and they look like a little bar, and, and it's got nice stuff on the inside, but it's got an orange swirl on the outside, amen. And, and, and my mother uh, took it, and she began to eat it, and she said, she took one bite, she said, ooh. She said, that just changed my life, amen. If you ever ate my dad, um, baked spaghetti, it will change your life, man. It'll change your life. It's good stuff. If you, if you ever eat my Hot Pocket, it'll change your life. <laughs> it is good stuff. I cook it just right to the point you got to let it cool because you can bite it and it'll burn your tongue and that won't change your life. But, but when you eat it at the right time, at the right place, it'll change your life. My, my wife had some coworkers that went out and ate a piece of steak. Uh, it was a 12-ounce steak and it was $28 an ounce. $28 an ounce. Just think about that. Go ahead and multiply that up. You'd be like, oh, Jesus, right? <laughs> but we got to talking to him, and he said, listen, I can't even eat steak no more. He said, because it was the best steak I ever. I said, it better be for $28 an ounce. I had to ask for a half an ounce, say it again. Yeah, half an ounce of that steak. He said, it was the best steak I ever had. It was so good. Now when I go to restaurants, I don't even order steak anymore. I have to order chicken or I have to order a, a, a lobster. Yeah, that's the kind of person we talk about. I had to order all this kind of stuff. But you know what? He said it was the best steak ever. Changed his life. 
you realize when you come to the table, Jesus Christ will change your life forever. And you know what? He's only serving two things. He's serving bread and wine. He's serving bread. Now, some of y'all are like, I ain't going to that table. It's his way. He's serving bread and wine. I love it. John 6 and 35 says this. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You see, Jesus is to the soul what bread is to the body. What I mean is that he will give you uh, uh, all the support, all the things you need to help your spiritual life last forever. In the Old Testament, he, he gave the Israelites bread from heaven to support their lives. But now Jesus came to this earth so you can be saved. He is the bread of life. At this table is the best bread you'll ever have because it's part of Jesus that went on to a cross that died for you and I. And he said, I came not just to come to, to say, I came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Because if you take part of me, I will change. I like, um, me and my wife, we go to Salute River Grill about every week, amen, and, and they bring us out these little muffins, and oh my goodness, they're so good, um, I think it's so chippy, but to me it's just really good, you, you bite into that thing, you, you be praising Jesus, amen, and I try to, they bring us four, and I try to eat three, <laughs> I leave one for my wife because that's what we're supposed to do as men. At least leave one. Ah, but it's so good. But I think about all the bread that I've ate. And I think about how good it is and how filling it is. But Jesus Christ will fill you more than anything that you ever eat on this earth. Sometimes we eat so much bread we don't even want the dinner, right? Do you realize when you eat a part of Jesus, he'll fill you up? Amen. He'll fill you up with love, with compassion, with hope, with joy. He'll change your whole life forever if you just take a part of Jesus. But then he'll love it because he don't stop there. Because he's also brought you something to drink. And that drink is water. Not any kind of water, but living water. He told one lady at the well, if you just drink a part of me, amen, you will never go thirsty anymore. You won't need any other water. Listen, church, some of you are hungry. Some of you are thirsty. Then come to the table and eat of the bread of life. Eat of the bread of Jesus Christ. And drink the water that's flowing out of his body. That water that's living water. That will build you up on the inside. A water that will never quit, that will never go dry, because it takes their life and changes it completely on the inside. The bread and water of Jesus Christ. Come to the table, because the food there is the best food you've ever had. And I love it because no matter how much you eat of it, no matter how much you drink of it, you still want more of it. I have been saved, I have been sanctified, and I have been filled with the Holy Ghost. And for you that don't know, we are a Pentecostal church, and we believe in those three things. Amen? Yes. And you know what? I've done all three, but you know, I've never what, stopped seeking God, because I still want more of it. Yes. I have spoken in tongues, but you know what? I still seek God. And some of us think, oh, that's the Holy Grail. But you know what? I still seek God, because I want more of God. Amen? Amen. I have fell on my face and cried. I have fell on my face and gave it all to God. And I still want more of him every single day. Because when I take part of that bread and that water, it's something that gets a hold of you that you just want to continue to feast on. That you want to continue to get in your life. And church, if we would just start feasting on the bread and the water of Jesus Christ, then our lives would be changed forever. Listen, I know some people can come and, and, and feed off this table. And then they go and they say, I don't believe even a God, but you know what, I know deep down inside of them, there still is a God that's living inside of them because once you get a hold of this bread and this water, you don't ever forget it, amen, you don't ever lose that feeling the first time it touched your mouth, that first time it touched your heart because you know that that is the best thing that you ever had amen. some of us need to stop trying to perfect people, just get them to the table so they can eat part of it amen, amen. stop trying to stop trying to tell people to come to your table Amen. I know we want to eat by ourselves. Amen. But you know what? 
Some of us need to just open up our table and say, whoever wants to come, come on. <laughs> the food is great. You realize that God's food? <laughs> I was talking to Brother Mike. He went to the dealer house. I've never been, but he was telling me, man, they had like sausage like five different ways. Hey, man, they had like smoked and, and, and chopped up, cut up, and all this. It was some sort of biscuits and all this. But he said every time they would get a little bit lower, you know what the, the server would do? He would bring out more. Like, you know, you know what? If you would come to Jesus, he, he just keeps bringing out more. He just keeps pouring it out. And you know what? It's not just for you. It's for the person sitting beside you. It's for the person that's on the corner. Okay? It's for the drug dealer. It's for the murderer. It's for the lesbian. I just got tomorrow. I hope you all come back tomorrow, but you might not. I'm not a pastor who likes to scare people because I don't like to get scared myself. Amen. Amen. I don't like talking about the end of times, but I know the end of times are close and they're near. Amen. I know that I know what I see and what I see on the news and what I see and all of what's going on in this world and you can read Matthew, can you find out everything that's happening in Matthew that God says is close to the end of time? It's close to the end of times if you look at it right now. But I also know the invitation is still open right now. Right, right, right. The, the table's still ready. But you gotta be ready to accept it. You see, the Bible tells us that one day, as I said, Jesus will either come back or he'll take us, take us from life through death. You see, we could die at any time, and the Bible tells us that we don't know the day, the, the year, or the hour. But it also tells us in Hebrews 9 and 27, just as people are destined to die once, and after that you face the judgment. And when you get to the judgment, in Romans 14 and 12, it says this, so then each of us will give an account of ourselves. That's right. That's right. To God. An account of ourselves. I wish I could give an account for every single one of you. Because I'd say, hey, let them on in. But you know what? I ain't the bouncer to this party. That's right. Your name is either written in the book of life or it's not. And I'm not the one that can tell you if your name is written in the book of life. It's out between you and Jesus. But church, I'm telling you, you better answer this invitation now because there might not be another one that comes out. There might not be another moment when you have this. Church, we got to understand that. You see, when we die, we have to give an account to Jesus. We give an account on if we accepted his invitation to die with him or have we made excuses to keep us from him. And after that judgment, there's a decision that is made. For those that have not accepted the invitation to the, to, to the table will now spend eternity in a place called hell. 
And I know we don't like talking about hell, but hell's not what the world says hell is. Hell's what the Bible says. And that is a place of torture. That is a place of demise. That is a, called a lake of fire, as the Bible likes to call it. It's ten times hotter than any fire here on this earth. But the worst part about it at all is that there's no presence. Church, I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. I don't want to see my, last, my worst enemy die and go to hell. But you know what? If you don't accept the invitation, then you're going to. The problem is a lot of us don't even give the invitation anymore. When's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? That wasn't already saved. That wasn't already sanctified through the Holy Ghost. When's the last time you told somebody about God? Because see, yeah, there's the bad news, but here's the good news. You see, if they accept this invitation, if they come to the table and feed on Jesus Christ, have a relationship with Him, Ezekiel 36, 24 through 28 says this, For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. He was talking about a physical land. He was talking about a physical people. But I love the part he said, I'll give you a clean heart. I love the part he says, that you, after I put the Spirit into me, you'll be careful of my laws. Not because somebody preached it, but because the Spirit of God is inside of you and shows you. Hey. Not because somebody looked at you and said that you are a bad person, but because the Spirit of God is inside of you working and showing you what's right and what's wrong. That means you're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect until you get to heaven. But praise be to God, the Spirit of God is going to be inside of you and show you which way to go. Either to go right or left or go forward or go backward. The Spirit of God will change who you are. And church, if we would just allow the Spirit to come inside of us, how how much you can change us this morning. Because every day people die. Every day people are lost. They don't know who Jesus is. Don't let your invitation be concerned because so-and-so didn't take it or so-and-so didn't take it. It's your personal choice. Some of you think you're saved because your mom and daddy were saved, but that ain't the way it works. you got to give your life to God. Some people think they're saved just because they're a member of the church, but that ain't the way it works. That's the reason why we don't preach membership here. We preach you give your life to God. I hope you all become members. It'd be great, but you know what? If you are a member and not saved, it don't matter. There's people that go to church to church and become members. But you know what, church? The invitation's open this day. The invitation's open today. But it won't be open always. Give the life to Jesus. You know, if you come tonight, you'll get some good food. But if you don't, don't come tomorrow looking for it. It'd be on a trash can, but it won't be here. You're here right now. Won't you accept the invitation of Jesus Christ? Some of you say, well, Bobby, I've already done that. And I'm, that's, that's awesome. That's great. I celebrate with you. I thank God for you. But you know what? There's still, I tell Sister Courtney and Sister Sherry and a couple others that on my mind, there's still so many people that don't know Jesus Christ. In Williamston, not in Africa. I know we all want to be missionaries in Africa, but do you realize there's people in Williamston that don't know Jesus? 
I could probably throw a rock and hit a house because somebody don't know Jesus. And then I had to ask for repentance for throwing the rock. But you know, there's people that you come in contact with every single day who don't know who they are. <coughs> but we play church, we come to church, we worship for an hour, we hear a good uh, motivational speaking, and then we go home. But are you really changed in your heart? It says, listen, it's not about this building. It's not about a speaker. It's about me going and telling the world about Jesus. She <coughs> got to accept the invitation. When I was a youth minister, I'll never forget those couple girls that came in. A couple weeks later, one was in a real bad accident. She passed away. And the only thing that could go through my mind was, did we give her an invitation? Come to Jesus. I'll never forget the day that I was able to talk to, to a friend of mine. And I was talking about stuff that was not God-related. I was asking how he was doing and stuff. You know what? A month later, he died in a car accident. My first thought was, hey, that, I hope his family's okay. You know what my second <laughs> thought was? Was he saved? Did I let him know who Jesus Christ was? You see, church, we've got to get the invitation. Because the table is not always going to be there. The food is the best food you ever had. The fellowship is the best fellowship you ever had. The invitation is free and it's for all people. And you don't have to bring nothing. Table only gonna be set for so long. I ask you this morning, have you accepted the invitation? I am. Um, I'm excited about 2018. I know that's weird, right? Right? I remember Y2K. Some of y'all remember that. We stored water bottles up. We had food. We thought the world was gonna come to an end. Some of you young people don't know nothing about that, man. We thought everything. Thought money was going to be shooting out of ATM machine. We didn't have a clue what was going on. I'll never forget, man. After that past, we was like, oh, man, nothing can happen to us. And then 9 11 happened. A couple years later, everybody got scared and went to the church. You realize that five years after that, there was actually fewer people in the church than it was before 9 11. Because people think that the invitation is going to last forever, but it don't. And I'm excited about 2018, but I'm ready to go out on a bank for 2017. I'm ready to see people far from Christ restored. I'm ready to see their heart restored, their mind restored, and their soul restored. I'm ready for your family to be restored. I'm ready for you to call somebody that you hadn't talked to in 20 years and actually start a relationship with them, not because it thinks you better, but because God wants you to be a part and be a part of that relationship. I want to I want to I hear people come and testify to that. I want you to Facebook somebody that you just Facebook, mm -hmm, you know, that you talk bad about. I want you to Facebook and say, I'm sorry. Listen, God's in my heart, and I want to give you this invitation. I want to see God move in mighty ways here at Restoration Chapel. Right. I'm tired of talking about the movement. I want to see the movement. Amen. Amen. I want to see God restore lives. I want to see people that are already saved step up and say, hey, I'm going to be a server. I'm going to be the one that's going out and letting people know about Jesus Christ. You see, the master had to call somebody, and you know who he called? He called the server. And did the server complain about inviting people? Did the server complain about getting the table ready? No, you know what he did? He went out to the streets, and he went to the ones that were poor and lame, and then the, and then the master said, we need more people. So then he went a little bit farther. He went to the highways. He went there and there because because he realized this banquet was something that you cannot miss. This banquet was great. And if the master tells me to go, I'm going to go. Amen. I'm going to go. Because the banquet's not always on. I'm going to go now. Church, are you ready to go? I love the song. It is well. With my soul. It is well with my soul.
Is it well with your soul this morning?